we talked briefly on yesterday's Locked On Steelers podcast about Tyron Matthew mentioning on another podcast, the Tony Coluda podcast, that he had talked to Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's an interesting tidbit there, considering the Steelers still need a start, starting strong safety. And in fact, that's the only starting position that Kevin Colbert says they haven't addressed in free agency. But will they do it with Tyron Matthew? Is that a real thing? We talked about that a little bit yesterday with Wes Euler, but joining me today will be Jenna Harner of Channel 11 WPXI. She has told me that she has some specific takes she wants to let y'all in Steeler Nation know right here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. We're, we're going to talk about that, the quarterback situation, looking at the Steelers quarterbacks on the roster, as well as are there some of these rookie quarterbacks moving up and down the draft boards? It's going to be a fun episode of the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video. If you are want to get all of our daily content, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of that and our breaking news segments we sometimes do on that channel as well. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Joining me, as always, on Friday, she's back after we missed her from vacation last week. Jenna Harner, Channel 11, WPXI in Pittsburgh, is back on the show. What is up, Jenna? Chris, I'm so happy to be back. And I know that there were some people wondering where I was. I just took a little vacation. I just, you know, (laughs) I went to New York, had a nice little time. Ironically enough, did not go to the Penguins Rangers game, which turned out to probably be a good thing instead, (laughs) which I was telling Chris about. I went to a bar where you order any drink. And as long as the drink is for more than four dollars as long as you're spending more than four dollars on a drink and i know people are like okay new york city prices of course you're doing that this is a very reasonably priced brooklyn bar i think the beers were like six or seven bucks mixed drinks were like eight or nine i'm like okay this is you know what i'm used to paying not bad um but then they give you a ticket and you walk across the bar to the wood fired oven and you get a pizza and you're thinking okay this is you know it's gonna be a baby pizza it's gonna be like this small no 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 baby pizzas this was a legitimate here it is in comparison of what load yeah what a beer yep that's a pizza pizza okay that's a pizza pizza you get like six slices that are like this big, but it's, and it was so funny because, you know, we could talk about pizza for days, but it was very good. People were like, wow. oh, this is, you know, eh, pizza. I'm like, but it's New York pizza. It's good. Yeah. New York pizza is really is yeah, my favorite kind of pizza, oh, but, gosh. but man, I'm, I'm jealous. We need to get that in Pittsburgh. We're supposed to be the pizza. Yeah. We have the most pizza bars per capita in the United States. And we don't have that a, a free pizza for a beer. That's a great deal. I'd, I'd be over there now. I might drive to New York tonight. Anyways, <laughs> let's get to talking about the Steelers news, Jenna, because yes. Tyron Matthews thing. We, I talked about this briefly with yes, Wes Euler on yesterday's podcast, but I wanted to talk about this with you because we were talking off camera and you mentioned how like I got some takes to let Steeler Nation know here. And yep. I still think it's relevant to, 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 to at least lead off a show with here on the Locked of Steelers podcast because this is a major point. They need a strong safety. Tyron Matthews, the biggest safety on the market right now, as far as, you know, n- name wise, he's actually one of the smaller size wise. But point being, as far as talent wise, they need a guy that's going to be able to be starting caliber. And a lot of Steelers fans have been clamoring for him. And when he went on, they believe the Tony Corluta podcast, he came out. And he and he said that Mike Tomlin did speak to him on the phone, and that they've had com- they've, they've had conversations, and you know about him joining the team. And a lot of Steelers fans jump into the conclusion, oh, they, that means he's coming. It's a done deal. Like you know, this is just a matter of time. But but I I, I don't see it happening like that. I, I see this as as like a, it's a it's a little more complicated than that because I know the Steelers. But Jenna, what's your take on this? 
Well, naturally, I texted you before we were recording and I said, hey, you know, I have a take. Here it is. But like, of course, they're not going to. Of course, they're doing their due diligence here. Of course, Mike Tomlin is going to be reaching out because he is a prospective target. Does that is that the end all be all? And does that mean, oh, my God, he made a phone call. He's going to sign tomorrow and he'll be here next week. No, that's not what this is. This is the Steelers doing their homework, doing their due diligence and saying, hey, this guy is really talented. He could potentially be a good fit here. We're going to reach out. We're going to make some phone calls. It also would not shock me if reports come out later that members of the team, members of the defense have reached out and made some phone calls because that's all, that's what happened with Miles Jack. And look at what happened. Is that necessarily going to happen here for Tyron Matthew? I don't entirely think so. But it could be one of those things where it's like, hey, you never know. But at the end of the day, this is just the process here. This isn't anything bigger than that. That's what I, that's what I see this as too, Jenna. I, I really think the Steelers, and, and I said a little bit of this yesterday, but to, to el- elaborate on it, I really think the Steelers, they, they do this all the time. Mike Tomlin's known as a relationship coach who talks to everybody around the league. That's why he visits all the pro days. Uh, you know, Adam Schefter has has talked about how Mike Tomlin embraces the draft process better than anyone because he wants to get to know all the players. Uh, you know, Ian Rappaport called him the pro day king recently. It, that that stuff lasts. It's not like he just cares about you as a rookie and then all right, you're gone. He looks to main to establish and maintain those relationships across the NFL, and that's a big factor as far as you know guys knowing him and being like, yeah, I love to play for that guy. That's why at the Pro Bowl, the majority of players that were there said if they didn't if they weren't playing for their coach at that point in time, they'd want to play for Mike Tomlin more than anybody else. So. I, I look at this and I think this isn't what it is, but I do think what that tells me that, that he's talking about that and he's still saying the Steelers, it does mean the Steelers aren't off the table, but I do think it, 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 it means this probably along this lines, the Steelers have put in an offer for the Pittsburgh for, for, for Tyron Matthew, but that offer is a non-negotiable. This is what it is. You're probably going to get more from the Cowboys or from some other team that wants to bring you in. But we're letting you know if you come here, this will be your role, this will be your pay, and you'll be playing with Minka Fitzpatrick, TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, and on a defense coached by Mike Tomlin, Brian Flores, and Terrell Austin. So if you want to be part of that, come here. And I think that's where it is, is that Tyron Matthew, he has the offers. He may be waiting on someone else's offer, but he's the the one holding up the decision. And I think that that's what we're, we're all waiting for here, not... You know, are the Steelers actually pushing for him? They have. They've made their push. Now it's just up for Matthew to make his decision. Oh, absolutely. And I think this is another situation, too, where, again, you have Mike Tomlin kind of laying it out and saying, you know, hey, we might not be the ones that are going to pay you the most money in this scenario, but look at who you're going to come and get to play with. TJ Watt's a huge part of this defense. Cam Hayward, Minka Fitzpatrick, you know, Akella Witherspoon, you have the youth in him. You have all these guys that are stars or potential rising stars, and you can come be a part of this. Again, we're probably not going to be the team that's flashing all the dollar signs. And is that what he wants? You know, obviously we're not in his head. We don't know. But that is going to be something that's like, hey, this is an option for you. Oh, by the way, you get to come play for me. And uh, Brian Flores is on my defensive staff. And we see his roles being a lot of different things. Like that is very enticing to players. And I'm sure for Matthew, that is something he's really thinking about. That's something he's weighing his options. But at the end of the day, too, I mean, I feel like we talk about this kind of all the time, especially when it's It's like, you know, I'm not comparing it to kids deciding which college to go to, but in that realm where it's like, you have to weigh your options. It's like, I get to play for this coach. I get to have these guys. This is what this team is offering. This is what this team's offering. But I just have to laugh at everybody being not, I'm not saying laugh in a bad way. I'm not laughing at you. I just have to laugh at the fact, I should say, that this is that like snap jump to conclusion where everyone's like, oh my God, this means he's coming because Mike Tomlin called. Like, no, the Steelers are doing exactly what they should be doing in this process. And now it's just going to be kind of that wait and see game. If, you know, does he decide to come play here? That's a, that, that's what this is about. It's a wait and see game. And, and the Steelers, 
they always want to play from a position of strength. They don't want to be out there trying to be like, oh, we're the thirsty team that wants that just wants to hire, you know, pay, pay, pay all this money. That's why you see all these friendly contracts that they're signing. They didn't sign mm-hmm. James Daniels or Mitch Trubisky or Miles Jack to some l- lucrative contracts. They're going to tie them up way down the line. They signed them to exactly what they wanted to say. All right, we see your value. This is what we see it as. And if you mm-hmm. play great, this is what waits for you. If not, we have escape rooms here, uh, you know, as far as the, 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 the way the salary cap set up in, in these deals. So I, I I'm with you. I, I think that it's, it does mean that, that Tyron Matthew still has the Steelers in his purview, but it doesn't mean that he's definitely going there. And it doesn't mean the Steelers are trying to sell out or make a all out push to get him financially. There may be a private, like you said, Cam Hayward and guys are calling him, but yeah. it's, it's not, it's not something that's going to change. I think all the dynamics financially of what the Steelers are offering him. And that's the biggest deal there. But We'll keep you updated on the Tyron Matthew saga because I'm sure he'll eventually make a decision and that will change the safety market. And if he doesn't pick the Steelers, I would fully anticipate that that, that to mean Terrell Edmonds would be coming back. So yeah, that, that 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 does seem like a reasonable kind of thing. And who knows, he might um Edmonds might decide that he is gonna come back within the next couple of weeks, and then it is that you know, decision time. Are they going to reach out again? How is that going to happen? But at the end of the day, too, like there there's still good options here. And you and I were talking about this a little bit before, but there is the potential too that if you bring a guy like Edmonds back, you can draft a safety, you can find one yeah. of those guys, or hopefully who you're looking for through the draft that you're able to bring up and say, Hey, you know you can challenge for this spot because you and I were saying too, if you have a safety tandem of uh, Mika Fitzpatrick and Tyron Matthew, you're one probably not looking for that as a huge area of need when you're drafting, unless you're drafting, you know, unless you're picking him uh, in one of the later rounds. But it's also, if you're going to be that third guy on the depth chart there, it's going to be a little bit harder to get in. You're probably going to focus, the defense is going to focus all their energy on those two guys and maybe not get those three, what were you saying, the three set safeties in yes. there type thing. Yeah, you're not going to see as many of those looks because you have two of the, you know, arguably two of the yeah Yeah. to the premier yeah to the premier guys so if Edmonds does come back it does provide that opportunity for them to potentially look in the draft and see if they can find someone there and then you know as they come through the system and everything like that maybe there's a chance that we'll see them but again who knows what's going to happen things can change in the matter of you know a couple minutes we know this league all too well yeah, by the time this episode airs, Tyron Matthew may have announced something. Hopefully, I'm not going to wood here because I don't want to have to redo it. <laughs> But uh, but let, we're going to switch to some quarterback talk really briefly because uh, th- there's there's still some rumblings about what the v- value is and what the outlook is for the season. We're going to talk about that in just a second here. But first, I got to talk to you guys about BetOnline.net. The final four is upon us, and that means you got to put some money down on some college basketball. If you missed out on most of March Madness, if you're not, you still get the women's and the men's to bet on in these in the upcoming tournaments. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. BetOnline remains the number one spot and the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news all season long. And it's not just college hoops. They also have the NBA, the NHL, uh, the UFC, boxing. They have so many different options when it comes to sports wage- wagering and in your information needs, as well as live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games right on their website. So head to their website or use your mobile device today to learn more about the trends in the action when you visit BetOnline, where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. She's Jenna Harner, and we're talking about your Pittsburgh Steelers. Jenna, Mason Rudolph has been seen still working out, you know, working on his form. He was hanging out with Joe Hayden, and he was, you know, he's been he's been on talk shows where he's talked about how he still sees himself as fighting for his job, and he's he's not going to make it easy. A lot of people are like, okay, we hear you, Mason. There's a lot of Steelers fans that now are like, Mitch Trubisky's here. Thanks, bye. You can go sit in the background now. But I do think there's a sense that he's going to compete for this job. But yeah. what, what I what I also think that has to be paid attention to here, Jenna, is that his competi- the, the field of his competition ain't complete yet. In the NFL draft, the Steelers have visited the top five perceived quarterback prospects of this draft class. And, and again, I don't think that means they're guaranteed to pick one at 20. But I do think another arm is coming in this upcoming draft class, and that this could this could further shake up the quarterback room where 
you know, maybe Mason and Mitch, they're battling it out. Maybe that rookie comes in and adds another spark there. There's also Dwayne Haskins is going to be in the mix. But what's your readout on how this is going to play out over the next few months as far as who's the top dog? We, we've known that Mitch Trubisky is right now preset as their, their, their top position. But Mason having the experience and maybe a rookie wowing somebody – could kind of set the the whole quarterback room ablaze and shake everything up. Yeah, there's no doubt. This is going to be a fun training camp to just strictly watch the quarterback competition because obviously you have the three guys that are already in the room. You have Mitch, you have Mason, and you have Dwayne Haskins. But I realistically, and from the way that we talked with Kevin Colbert and Art Rooney II and conversations that have happened since with you know different reporters uh, down at the NFL owners meetings, things on those lines, like it really does seem like there is going to be somebody else. Again, whether they do find that with, or what you know, if they find that player in the draft, which I think realistically is going to happen, is it going to be that they draft a premier guy at 20? We don't entirely know. I had to, again, I'm feeling like I'm on the laughing train a little bit today. Um, tried to chuckle a little bit though. I saw a mock draft, Kenny Pickett, it had Kenny Pickett going number 20 to the Steelers. I just, I that to me does not feel realistic at all, and if it is. Steelers go get your guy if you want him but that just is one of those things that I just don't think he's going to be there I think realistically a lot of these quarterbacks are going to go off the board decently quickly in this draft we know there's teams that need them especially I feel like you and I have talked about this kind of ad nauseum a little bit but Carolina especially Kenny Pickett's pro day I'm like if he if Kenny Pickett doesn't go to Carolina at just what are they sixth overall fourth overall sixth, sixth overall yep yeah if he doesn't go to them at sixth overall, I will be shocked. And if they don't pick him and he's still on the board, it, the only reason I don't see him going to Carolina is if somebody before them takes Kenny Pickett. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I just, I was there at the Pitt Pro Day. Carolina's uh, Matt Rule, Scott Federer, their GM, all their, the, uh, their, their, their top brass, they were all over Kenny. And they were yeah. the only other head coach and GM crew to show up other than Tomlin and Colbert because that's their training facility. They literally worked there. Uh, yeah. So they walked, they walked out of their offices and outside of the facility and across the parking lot. That's literally what they did. And they're and they're there every day anyways. So yes. I, I'm, I'm with you on Kenny Pickett, not fallen, but there's some people who think that Desmond Ritter is that guy. And I've seen a lot of people that are Desmond Ritter's rising up the ranks. I think part of it is some fans are starting to catch up on his highlights, but, you know, mm -hmm. part of it's also, you know, he tested well at the combine. He has the size. He, you know, people are saying, oh, he can be the guy because he has a little bit stronger of an arm than Kenny Pickett. And he's he's faster and he can, he can maybe use his, his mobility better. I, I look at that and I say, OK, maybe at 52 if he's there and maybe if you're in the second round and you want to trade up a little bit to go get him. But I just I'm sorry. At 20, if you're picking Desmond Ritter, most likely it does mean that Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett are gone. But also on top of of, of picking Desmond Ritter, Ritter there, you're passing up uh, you know, potentially a Jordan Davis, potentially a Derek Stingley, an Andrew Booth, you know, Devontae Wyatt, a, a number of defensive playmakers who could fall to you at that position and be game changers for what you're trying to be as far as establishing a new elite defensive reign for several yeah. years in the NFL. I just I don't know if Desmond Ritter's worth that. Um, you know, have you have you gotten a sense, Jenna, from people you've talked to just about where where Desmond Ritter d comes into the conversation? Because that top five quarterback rankings, it's all over the place. A lot of people have Malik Willis at one. Some people have Desmond Ritter at two. Some people have Kenny Pickett at two. Some people have Kenny Pickett at one. Where's your consensus on this? And it's so funny because there's so many things like differing opinions. I've just kind of heard through different people saying you talk to anybody and it seems like no one seems to have a consensus of these, this quarterback class, which is so telling of the class itself. You know, there's no true number one, number two, you know, you can say anything, you know, I think it's this guy. I think it's that guy. But in reality, we knew that this quarterback's class was a little bit, I don't want to say weaker and not, I, I have no knocks on any of these guys because they're all very talented players who are going to, hopefully find success in the NFL, but it's not like what we saw the year of uh, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. It's, right. you know, it's not that class. It's just not. Um, I, I re I've heard, you know, ups and downs. Ritter's stock is rising. There's no doubt about that because like you said, I think people are kind of catching on to, Oh, he did all this. He did all this. And of course with Cincy being, you know, doing what they did this year and getting, 
to the college. They, they, they did get to the college football playoff. I'm not talking about it. Yeah, they did. No, you know, right? they, yeah. they, they, they were the number four seat. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm like. I second guess myself sometimes. Yeah, getting to the college football playoff um, as the first non power five team, you know, that's clearly an indication of his strengths as well as the team around him. Um, I, I, it's one of those things I kind of like you go back and forth to. I don't know if that's something the Steelers want to do in that sense because everybody's already talking about next year's quarterback class and how strong that is. If you don't think Mitch is Trubisky's the guy, if he beats Mason for the start, there's so many ifs, you know, I feel like I'm kind of going on a million different tangents here, but there's so many ifs with all of this that you don't know how things are going to shake out. I think that if he's there in the second round, absolutely go grab him. No doubt about that. But I just don't entirely see that being like, oh, you have to go get this guy. Because weeks ago, everybody's like, oh, my God, you have to go get Kenny Pickett if he's available. Oh, my God, you have to go get uh, Malik Willis if he's available. There's going to be so many things that shake out. I, I just don't entirely see them addressing that. If he's there, again, if he's there at 52, absolutely go do it. But I think there's bigger points of need where – they can fill in these other holes. And all of a sudden we're talking about, you know, next season. Hey, you know, oh my God, Mitch performed really well. Oh my God, Mason performed really well. Oh my God. You know, there's so many things that can happen. There's a lot of different directions this can go. And I think that's the bottom point. But the, the Steelers, again, their whole point of them is they want to play from a position of strength in, yes. in this. They're, they're saying, we know it can go in a whole bunch of different directions. We're putting our, in our, ourselves in a position where if it doesn't go our way, quarterback, we don't got to pick one. Because we yes. went and got Mitch Trubisky, we got Mason Rudolph, we got Dwayne Haskins. If we want to just pick up Bailey Zappi in the fifth round, we can do that. That's fine. Yeah. You're like, you Bolstering know, because... their assets as much as they can. Exactly. And and that's the bottom line is that with with their assets, they're gonna have they're gonna be in a position to say, you know what, you know, if that defensive star star playmaker is there, we can take them. And yes. that and and I'm not pigeonholed into a quarterback. That's honestly that's what happened to the Steelers back in 2016 with Artie Burns. They were kind of pigeonholed into needing a cornerback, and they, and the guy that they want they really wanted William Jackson the third went one pick before them. So they said, oh, okay, we'll stick with it. We'll get Artie Burns, and that's what we'll that that's what we'll work with there. Um, but I just I, I look at at how at how they're playing the situation out. I don't think that they're at all um, that they're at all locked into taking one of these quarterbacks especially if the value isn't there when there's other players who are ranking really high yeah and the thing is is like the value can change too you and i were talking about that as well all of a sudden if one of these guys you know malik willis goes at two kenny pickett goes at two something like that there's that scramble where oh my god we didn't think it was going to be this we didn't think it was going to be this and there could be some elite playmaker that you know oh you anticipate going a little higher but because of the domino effect of you know teams x y and z ahead of the steelers taking quarterbacks then all of a sudden pieces continue to fall and you might get a guy you didn't know we know how the steelers draft they kind of you know you find ways to get the guy that you're looking for. They do the best available at that point because of the fact that they're not limited to, Oh, we need this guy in this position. Yes, uh, certainly. I, I feel, I feel you there entirely, but again, that that's, that's the whole strategy. That's why they yeah. signed a lot of guys across the board. That's why you saw the, they, they signed multiple offensive linemen. They brought, they brought in, uh, you know, two, they, they got back Witherspoon and brought in another cornerback. They signed miles Jack. They want, they, they brought, they, they brought, you know, they're making sure that they, they're solid at all these different positions. And that's where now they can say, we're going in whatever direction we want to in the NFL draft and y'all can't determine where we're going to go. Yeah. But I also think there's another aspect to the quarterback conversation that we keep forgetting when we're talking about this, because everyone thinks that, well, they're just trying to get the next Ben Roethlisberger. N not necessarily right now, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about ab about that and how that plays into their 2022 plans in just a second here. First, I got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. It's about to be April. In fact, it is April now that it's Friday. Uh, happy April. Yeah. Happy happy uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Don't Oof. pull no pranks on nobody, y'all. Don't no. be too aggressive. I've seen some rough mm -hmm. pranks out there. But uh, it's that time of the year where people start to, uh, are starting to give up on their resolutions. Don't let you yourself be one of those people because you can have a built bar, which helps you stay online with what, with what you're trying to diet and 
helps you get something that tastes awesome. If you haven't tried the new Built Bars, the Puffs flavors, they're awesome because they're they're the first ever protein infused marshmallows, flush, fluffy, marshmallowy, and covered in 100% real chocolate. You can get flavors like cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, just like that, and tasting like a marshmallow as a protein bar. But hey, if you want the regular Built Bars, those are still awesome and also covered in 100% real chocolate. And they're low in calorie but high in protein. The average Built Bar contains 130 calories, 40 grams of sugar, and four net carbs as well as 17 grams of protein, while the average candy bar has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. There's so many flavors to choose from, from double chocolate to coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, all those flavors are available when you go to Built.com. And when you go to Built.com, you can get a discount on the Built Bars that you can get delivered right to your door by going and putting in the promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, for 15% off when you visit Built.com. Back here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter, she's Jenna Harner, and we're continuing our discussion on the Steelers here in the quarterback situation. Uh, again, the Steelers could go a number of different directions this year. You know, and I, I think I, I talked about this with Wes at one point. If you're drafting a Malik Willis, you're drafting a guy you probably want to sit, to sit a year to adjust to the NFL. If you're drafting a Kenny Pickett, you're expecting him to come in immediately and start sooner rather than later because he has a lot more of his mechanics down and he's a lot more NFL ready than most of the other guys out there. Same thing, but and Desmond Ritter, kind of a mix of both. Like he's kind of a guy you want to sit, but you also like, I think he's more NFL ready than Malik Willis as far as, you know, playing against top competition and things that you want from him but all that aside I, I think people need to remember something about whoever starts for the Steelers at court quarterback this is not a guy who's going to be coming in and 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 just taking over where Ben was four years ago when he was lighting lighting up the NFL whoever takes over for the quarterback position for the Steelers and Matt Canada's for, you know a second year of working this offense this is still going to be a run first offense, a play action offense that's going to say your number one job, don't throw it to the other team. Don't yep. take the sack that loses the fumble and gives the other team the ball so that our defense is up against it. Your number one job is if if you if the wide open thing isn't there, if the if the easy opportunities aren't there, set us up so we can pin these guys deep with punts and our defense can play and get the turnovers and then give us the short field. I don't think if people, when people talk about Mitch Trubisky, oh, he's not all that. They don't need him to be all that. They don't no. need Mason Rudolph to be all that, nor any of these rookies. This no. team next year is built on defense and probably running the ball, even though I still think they need to address things on their offensive line before they get to training camp. And we also have to remember the fact, too, that this is going to be a new offensive line. Once again, these guys are going to have yeah. to gel. They're going to have to work with each other. They're going to have to find the best combination of who goes where because you have different guys that can be versatile in different areas. You have Kendrick Green. You, know, you have some of these guys that can shift around and play different roles. But, oh, you also have Najee Harris as your running back. So why aren't you going to give him the ball? He is going to be that – I don't even – like, it's not even fair to say a quote-unquote, like, la backup option in that way, but he's going to be a safety net for you no matter yep. what. He's going yep. to be there where if the option isn't there for whoever's starting at quarterback – hand the ball to him, let him work his magic, let him do what he does and what we know he can do behind a solid offensive line. They could, and again, that's why they drafted him so high. It wasn't because yes. they felt like, oh, you just need to get one. No, they knew that they were going to have a time where they weren't going to have a premier quarterback. And what's the best way to leave that is to have a strong running game and a yep. strong running back who can yep. attract a lot of attention. Because often that's the balance that you want to have. You want to have a quarterback who has an arm enough to hit the hit deep balls down the field and a running back that scares defenses enough to commit to them. So either – we're scared of the deep ball or we're scared of the running game. That's what was so 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 amazing about the Le'Veon Bell years was that yeah. the, the, when the Steelers ran the ball with Le'Veon Bell, teams needed to commit to it. But if they committed to it too much, Ben Roethlisberger was hurting you deep down the field with Antonio Brown. The Steelers aren't going to get back to the killer B era. And I don't think they even no. want to per se. I think they want they they want a team that's defensively based and a team that's going to beat you, beat you that way and maybe have better quarterback play than Mitch Trubisky or Mason Rudolph. But 
there this team next year is going to be a running team. It's going to go through Najee Harris and uh, this new offensive line. That's probably going to be led by James Daniels. We'll see how he plays um, this year. But again, Jenna, I, I think that's an important piece of this conversation. Is they don't they're not in a position where if they're sitting there at twenty and you know and 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 they and there's a quarterback sitting there, they don't have to take the quarterback because quarterback's not going to be the most important position on the team next year. No, it's just it's not. That's the thing is, and I feel like we've talked about this a bunch too. But there's definite areas of need, and if it's the case where he a guy is there and you have the chance that's going to be a decision obviously that they're going to have to make. And it's going to say, what is this? What is the biggest piece of need? What do we need the most? Who can we get the most value of? Where do we find the best? What do we see as the best fit here that really can kind of, you know, come in to this offense, this defense, this team as seamlessly as possible and give us the best chance to win. That's basically kind of where this all stems or I guess what it all comes down to in that way. And that's kind of, I always laugh too. I'm like, there's a reason that Kevin Colbert and, you know, Art Rooney and Mike Tomlin are all in a room and they're all making these decisions. Like there's a reason that we're not the ones making these decisions here. There certainly is. Then that this is all, again, they have a whole plan crafted out. They have a, they have a vision for these things. They yeah. The Steelers don't just make haphazard decisions. They have no. a long plan that's set out ahead, you know, months in advance as far as their 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 vision for seeing things. Like the, their, their decision to not bring back Bud Dupree was because they knew they were paying T.J. Watt. They were going to have to pay Minka Fitzpatrick. And they wanted wiggle room in these upcoming years to address yeah. multiple weaknesses on the roster. And I guarantee you, a lot of the decisions right now with the way they're signing some of these contracts, they're there to set up those future decisions next year when I really think they make their push for their quarterback of the future. So with that being said, we got to cut it because we're, we're over our time. But thank you so much, Jenna Harner, for coming on this show every Friday. We appreciate you. We're glad to have you back off your vacation. Um, let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Well, I'm always glad to join you on a Friday. It's the best day of the week. What's not to love about it? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Jenna Harner 11, Instagram, Jenna underscore Harner, and uh, on WPXI, uh, doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, got a bunch of cool stories kind of coming your way as we uh, hit the spring here. It's wild, but uh, yeah, lots of fun stuff. So uh, tune in and check it out. Absolutely. Do do tune in and check it out. What Jenna, what Jenna Hunter is up to. They do great work at Channel 11. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Don't forget, Mock Draft Monday is coming up for next Monday. So go on the Locked On Steelers Facebook group post. You'll find the, lock, the Mock Draft Monday post that's been made. It should be pinned to the top of the group. Make your post. Just to uh, yeah, post your picture of your mock draft and you'll have a chance to get your mock draft evaluated and talked about with your picks next week on Monday's episode. Thanks again to Jennifer for joining us. Thank you for checking us out. We hope you have a great weekend and we will see you next uh, on Monday when we're talking about that mock draft Monday episode.